So instead of chasing the muscle all the way along its length, we can focus more on just as, it, as it's emerged. So what's the gist of this paper? So the idea in this paper is that instead of using the more common patterns like you can maybe just see behind me now, which is a, a five injection point or a seven injection point in the glabella, which is definitely the norm. That's the most common pattern that I see everywhere. And it's fundamentally because that's how, what the licensed dose is, that you may be able to get a similar result with fewer side effects using a modified technique. And so the, the modification that's been made is instead of using five injection points, we'll use three and try and inject near the origin of the muscle. So instead of chasing the muscle all the way along its length, we can focus more on just as, it, as it's emerged, at least maybe the, the bottom third of where it is relative to the origin. And then you may, you may be able to get the same result with fewer side effects. So deeper, is that what you mean? Well, it's, it's similar to what you would normally do, but there are essentially two injection points taken off the corrugator. So the, the biggest difference is that you're not injecting the lateral part of the corrugator muscle. So um, there's also some difference in the angle of injection compared with how I see some people inject. So we'll talk about that when we show that the actual injections. Um, but all, all together, it's, it's about safety and efficacy and maybe efficiency as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a suggestion that this is a, certainly something you could consider doing in your practice. Okay, well, we'll link the paper below in the description. So what do they find? So the study covered about 105 people and what they did is use individual clinicians trained to use this specific technique. That Each clinician was given the power to select the patient that they wanted to, to actually test it on and uh, to use the products that they normally use. So there were different brands of toxin in the trial. And um, it, effectively then we, they measured very carefully what the outcome of that was, specifically looking for brow and eyelid drops. And what they found is that there were none. Now, if there is ever a criticism in any aesthetics research, it's always that the end number is not enough. There are not enough people in the trial. So the incidence of the thing they're looking for in the reference they used is 3%, 3% chance of an eyelid drop. My, in my clinical practice, I would say clinically, whether every day kind of comings and going in a clinic, it's not 3%, it would be less than that. But what I don't do is photograph and measure people in detail after every procedure. So it's hard to know, but I would say certainly in terms of a clinically relevant ptosis, it's not that high, it's not 3%, certainly in my experience, depends how you inject, I suppose. But the thesis is that this might make it safer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that could certainly be the case, but it would be nice if we had 10,000 people in the study, but that's never gonna happen, unfortunately. Were there any downsides? I think that that's probably one of the main things I'd like to put out there. So the, the, there's always a downside to every good idea. And that's something that will help people in life generally. But if you think there's a fundamental truth and there's only one way to do things, you will find out that, that for a different problem or a different patient that you're wrong. And um, the, what I suspect the downside is of this technique, and I actually know because we actually been doing this for years, we called it our frown supplement. So in year, for years in our clinic, when we didn't want to treat someone with uh, someone didn't want three areas but we were worried they would get a brow drop we would treat a more focused central injection pattern because i was worried about medial brow drops and um, but they didn't really care about their glabella lines so i've actually got quite a lot of experience using this technique the downside is is someone who's got strong muscles you will still get a lateral pull from the corrugator in fact i think you can see that in some of the examples in the paper now if your patient wants movement that can be a good thing but we all know some patients they see the outcome as having no movement and depending on your consultation and what you what you agree as the actual goal of the treatment, you will have some patients saying, I can still see my frown and I don't want that. Um, and you may accept that that's something you need to change in your technique or you might attempt to change the patient's view of whether movement is a bad thing or not.